In this example, we're given a picture of a triangle with uh, some kind of segment that connects a side, opposite side, to an angle. And we are given some information about it. It turns out that, the, that this is an altitude because we're told that HJ is perpendicular to KL. And we're told that HK is congruent to HL. So these are these two sides right here have congruent side lengths. So this is an isosceles triangle. And we are asked to prove that KJ is congruent to JL, so that these two side lengths are, are congruent. So we're going to write this proof in the what we call the formal table format, okay? But the first thing that we should do is kind of plan out how we're going to prove this, okay? Remember, in a proof, you have to state everything. You have to state everything um, and reasons for why you're stating it. Some of the stuff we're going to state was given to us. So these two things are going to be the first things that we state because they are given to us. All right. And then from there, we can use definitions. We can use properties. We can use all kinds of stuff. So one thing is that the definition of perpendicular, right? So this perpendicular, this means that these are right angles. So we have two right angles here. So that's going to be one thing that we want to write in our uh, proof. And remember, by the way, I should mark these things. So, so there's that's from the right angle. So I'll just kind of color code this. That was given to us. The other thing that's given is that HK is congruent to HL. All right. And so at this point, the next thing that we can say is, well, this side, so these two sides are congruent. These are right triangles. And then this side is obviously congruent to itself, right, this, this segment. Um, now I'm thinking of this segment as being shared by the two different sub triangles, smaller triangles, but this segment is has the length equal to itself. Um, that's obvious, right? But there's a property for that. We'll get to that when we write out the reasons for these. We have to say this though because now what we have is we have hypotenuse, hypotenuse, and then leg common legs, right? So we have the HL principle, which is going to give us that these two triangles, that these two triangles are congruent to one another. All right, so that's going to be our hypotenuse leg property. All right, hypotenuse leg property to give us that these two smaller triangles are congruent to one another. And once we know they're congruent, then we will get our end result because the end result is to show that KJ is congruent to to uh, JL. That's these two, right? These two segments, and that's going to come from corresponding parts of congruent triangles, CPCTC. Are congruent, right? So that's, that's a crazy acronym. Um, we're going to write out in words all of these properties, but they do all have uh, acronyms, okay? So this is called, I call this the planning phase, all right? So our planning phase, uh, we use the picture. Remember in the book it says uh, write down the given, the prove, draw a picture, plan it out, and then actually do it, right? So we've just completed the planning phase, and we are ready to write our formal proof now. Um, remember, for us, a formal proof is just a table with a list of statements and reasons, okay? So in the book, they always title this thing proof. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat and make very straight lines. Okay, so there's a straight line. And then as part of our proof, we have these two. We have statements. All right, and then we have reasons. Now, these are usually spread out kind of evenly here. Our statements are not going to be as long as our reasons, okay? Um, so let's start writing. So the first thing you always state for your statements are the given statements. So the given statements are HJ is perpendicular to KL. That's given. And HK is congruent to HL. Both of these are given, right? So the reason for this is just... These were given to us, all right? I'm going to actually move this over because, like I said, we're not going to need all this room. We might need more room to write on this side, all right? The next thing that we want to do is uh, start writing out. So we, we, were given, we were given these two things. So we have taken care of uh, the perpendicular, which was pink in our picture, magenta in our picture, and the green, those sides being corresponding. The next thing we need to do is get these right angles in here. Now, this seems obvious, right? But we need to say that these two angles are right angles, okay? So these angles are angle, what, KJH or HJK. Uh, let's do it that way, H, 
JK, this is a right angle, so it's 90 degrees. And similarly, HJL is equal to 90 degrees. You can say is right or is, is a right triangle, uh, or sorry, a right angle. You can write these out in words if you want. We know that a right angle is 90 degrees, so I'm just going to leave it like that. And the reason here, this is just definition of perpendicular, right? So this is the definition of perpendicular. So notice that I'm using the symbols over here in my statements, like the perpendicular symbol. We were given it that way anyway. I'm writing out a little more detail for my reasons though, right? And sometimes it's good to actually number our reasons. We're up to step three now, or statement three. By the way, you could number these all however you want. It doesn't matter how you number them. So you could make these all individual uh, numbered things. You just have to include individual reasons over here. So I like to group together uh, statements that have the same reason as long as you go in order, right? You always have to work down your proof in this order from one, you know, two, three, etc. So now we've got the right angles. The next thing we need is for this line segment, right, to be congruent to itself. And the reason we need to even say that at all is because it's shared by both of these triangles, right? It's shared by both triangles. So the way that we can say this is that, well, uh, side HJ is congruent to side HJ, you know, like duh, right? So what's this property called? This is actually a property. Remember this is, and whenever something is related to itself, that's called the reflexive property, right? So this is the reflexive property of side lengths, if you want, um, or sides, numbers, whatever. But we'll just write the reflexive property. Now what we have, or we have, so this is now we're up to step four. I'm starting to get excited because now we have right angle, we have leg leg, we have hypotenuse hypotenuse. Now we can say that these two triangles that I've shaded blue up here, these two triangles are congruent to one another. So in this case, and you have to order, you have to write their vertices in the order that they're going to be congruent to one another, right? So this one's going to be triangle HJK is congruent to triangle HJL. All right? The H, the J, and then the opposite vertices. And this is called um, the HL property or the hypotenuse leg property, right? So remember, hypotenuse implies right triangle. So this is the hypotenuse leg property. All right. This is called, in the book, you'll always see it as HL, okay? But I'm going to write it out in words here. So there's the HL property. Now we're almost done because remember, once we have congruent triangles, then congruent parts corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Mouthful, okay? See, that's why they use the acronym CPCTC, all right? But KJ and JL are corresponding sides of congruent triangles, and therefore they must be congruent to one another. That is the CPCTC. So we're going to make our conclusion here, right, that KJ is congruent to JL, and the reason here is like I said, congruent parts. Uh, I'm misnaming everything, right? It's corresponding parts, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And now we know why we like the acronym, right? But you have to know what the acronym means. And that's why I'm writing it out here. So this is CPCTC. Okay. As long as you know what CPCTC means, you're free to use it, but uh, unless I tell you not to, right? So in, in, in the in the daily check-ins, I'm probably going to tell you to write out all the properties. Okay. Um, so this is the end of the proof because this is what we wanted to prove. This this is this is the end of our proof. We've proved the last statement, right? And so. It is tradition in math to kind of state when you're done with the proof. When you write the proofs like this in kind of a table format, it's pretty clear when the proof is over because it just ends, right? Um, but I like to always add a little smiley face. Oh, man, I have the wrong tool. So I like to add a little smiley face at the end just to show everyone that we're done. We've completed the proof. We're happy about it. We learned something, and uh, that's it.